And we're back. Thanks so much for listening again, you guys. We are interviewing Mr. Jeff Gelman, who has been extremely insightful already. And I, I just wanted to dive right back in because right before the commercial break here, we were talking about uh, the importance of being able to whisper and utilizing tools essentially mm. like like when you consider a tool in its more abstract sense, a tool is supposed to add a leverage, supposed to make something easier, right? Which, which in a sense, uh, in the dog training world or in any in any like, let's say like a human psychological thing, these tools, these emotional mental tools are meant to kind of pull emotion out of it and be a bit more like Correct. systemic about it, right? And and people have this opposite idea. They think like this tool is you expressing your, your anger on this dog and, you know, when really it's meant to avoid that, right? Yeah. So my question if to you is... If it's taught properly. Well, of course. But, but the, you know, but what we're going to get into that later of like, you know, at what point... If something's taught properly and then someone does it incorrectly, is that your fault or their fault, right? No, so- it's, 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 I mean, I own weapons, but, but I'm not causing others harm unless you've broken into my home. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm, but, but I think that, so it's not the weapon that is, you know, someone's got to pull the trigger and I don't want to get into the whole gun debate thing. Um, but the point is, is that, what I'm finding after 200 seminars, mm-hmm. which is a lot of seminars, mm-hmm. right? 10,000 dogs, which is a lot of dogs. And this is not an <clears throat> ego statement. I've only met two people, two, two people. And I work with these people like literally face to face. Right. Two people that were using the remote collar improperly. Mm-hmm. Two. Mm-hmm. Okay. The biggest thing I see at seminars is people are, and now, most people come to seminars with all the equipment they need. They've already owned it. They're already busting their butt. They've gotten their dogs into a really good space. And maybe there's like one or two, maybe three things they're still struggling with. And they just Mm -hmm. want those stopped. Right. Most people are underwhelming their dogs, meaning they're, they're nagging their dogs. They're under correct. Annoying them. they're, They're annoying them. And I'm like, listen, your dog doesn't care. Stop right, right. underwhelming and give your dog a proper correction. And once they do that, it's like, oh, I guess my dog has been paying attention for the last two years. I'm like, yeah, your dog mm-hmm. knows. Your dog knows, but it didn't have incentive. And incentive could be, you know, incentive like when we're training a new command, the incentive is a reward, which is right. usually which is historically food. And but an incentive can also be a consequence and right, or lack you, thereof or avoidance. Yeah, of right, 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 yeah. right. Avoidance of a consequence. And I think when there's a lot of, there's a lot of people are, will make comments about like the only reason why the dog's holding it down stays because it's afraid of being corrected. And my right. big thing is like, and what's your point? And, mm. and I think it's like rewards also fail. We mm. all know, mm-hmm. we all know this mm-hmm. rewards fail. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, frankly, corrections also fail sometimes. So, right, right. so I mean, I had a, one of my dogs went after a coyote and could care less about a hundred on a remote. So my like dog I, had exactly, exactly that same problem. That that's when I knew for Simba. Uh, uh, oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's exactly when I knew that the mini wasn't enough. I bought him the boss collar, and that right. thing at a hundred will stop him. But I could see he was. He was he audibly yelping, <laughs> yeah, and audibly yelping while still darting straight but didn't, but for didn't the coyote. Care. Yeah, well, chasing yeah. that coyote is fun. It's 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 a yeah, lot of fun. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no different than when God dogs going through underground fencing on purpose, right? Right. Because because th- their ball went out of their yard. I mean, it's a right. ball. It's like a freaking chucket ball. I mean, are you serious? Yeah. It's not even alive. But they you, got, you, you got lit up over a ball. It's like there's mm-hmm. there's other balls in the house, you know. So so well, can, I, well, can I ask you this question that? that mm. uh, you know, agree, disagree, either way is perfectly fine. Mm. You know, um, do you think that a lot of the, a lot of the conflation, a lot of the, like, like the manipulation of words yes. with, with dog training That's is, it, it, but do you think it stems from a place of, um, you know, people tend to mistake, and this is outside of dog training too, but in the realm of dog training, people tend to mistake capability with intent like you talked about like just because you own firearms so do i like like just because just because somebody owns x doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do y you know what i'm saying so and and, and i know that there are people that that blur that line so like just because you have the ability let's say to tell a dog no but, but because you've conditioned it they will actually like listen and respond people assume you just yell at them for every little thing i think that 
I mean, a great thing is this, not to sit on the firearm thing, because I know that's a hot point for a lot of people, but I have no problem describing, you know, focusing on hot points. If you own a firearm, people literally assume who you voted for. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. What your favorite food is. Yeah. They literally think they have you all figured out just because you chose to keep your family safe. And, right. And also people would be surprised. I remember once there was a uh, uh, it was a, uh, a female that was shooting. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> every, so many people were like. Shooting for sport we, or like. We, we, for sport. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I think people would be really, really surprised at how many females own guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I mean, they, I think they would be blown away at how many females own guns. Uh-huh. I think one of the things out there is that people assume because you train a certain way that you treat your spouse like that, treat right. your uh-huh. kids like that. Uh-huh. You are a horrific human being. They have right. you pegged with every category of your life. And I'm like, I think that's a little bit lack of thought process on that of course and i don't and a lot of it if you broke it down rationally which unfortunately we don't have a rational thought process when it comes to dog training it's that like that's a really small-minded way to think of things i would hate to i would i would hope you wouldn't make all your decisions in life based on that philosophy right Um, and and it's like professional fighters it's like thinking like oh you're a boxer professionally so you must beat the shit out of your kid yeah i mean (laughs) i've got got a bunch of mma clients as well as police Mm -hmm. officer clients and one of my mma clients who does very very well um he's never been in a fight out of the ring his whole life right Right. ever you know you know but that's but that's not surprising like you know because i guess well you don't know but um i boxed pretty extensively i have like a decent amateur record all growing up and Mm -hmm. and you know what's funny um, as a kid and, and even as an adult to, you know, to the a similar extent, I think I'm like, I'm, I'm nervous about violence. I, I don't like it. Like it scares me. I think a lot of it is why I enjoyed boxing so much because mm. you get to, you get to, to like, because boxing, like the art of boxing is fun, like punching and, and not getting punched or jujitsu, like, you know, the, the, all that it, it is fun and it, and it's fast paced and like, it's a fun sport. And I'm like 150 pounds. I'm a smaller dude and it's weight based. Like it just made sense for me to compete in that as opposed to like, football basketball you know for sure, um, for sure but 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 pulling the like animosity out of it made me very comfortable in it and and it also made me comfortable with the uh not the concept of fighting in that like i'm not trying to fight everybody i come across just because i think i'm you know it was more just like i still want to to just be cool with everybody i just i just i'd like to think i'm just like that you know but mm. but if something were to go sideways I'm right. going to be better off than without, which makes me more comfortable even outside of boxing. Yeah, I think one of the one of the philosophies that I've always felt is, I mean, one of the great things about, say, you boxing is, you know, you can take care of yourself. That's why you don't need to get into a fight. Right, yeah. right, right, right. It's like because it's the same thing with me with dogs. I respect them, but I will grab any dog's leash. I mm-hmm, don't care mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because right. because I'm not like I I know I can get that dog into a better space. Right. So especially if it's muzzled up, I mean, but even if it's yeah. not muzzled, just hand me the leash. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. I think knowing that I've got that skill set to go toe to toe with some seriously aggressive dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I respect dogs. I respect the power of dogs, but I'm not afraid of them. Mm-hmm. I'm not right. afraid of them. And we deal with some 200 pound dogs that would love to put you in the hospital. But, right. But, having the skill set, the protocols, the safety, the safety mechanisms in place. um, It gives me a lot of confidence. So knowing that there's a skill set there on anything, I think keeps you out of trouble. Um, And I think that that goes across the board in a lot of, lot of ways. And I think that, that it's important to start recognizing that instead of we just live in, we seem to live in a very polarized world right now where right. everybody wants to be right. And like one of the first things they teach you in marriage counseling is how to argue properly. And it's mm-hmm. like the number one thing about arguing is stop trying to win. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Come to an agreement. Like right. there, there's no winners. It's like, right. You, you come to an agreement and it's like, it's the same thing with, with dog training is like, Listen, like, like we just put up a, a go home 
of who was it, Joel? Zoe? I think it was Zoe. And it's um it's a beautiful transformation. And mm-hmm. it gets hate and it gets frowny faces and angry faces. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why would you be angry about this owner who literally couldn't walk her dog after the age of three? Yeah. Didn't know any obedience and literally took her dog at the go home through Home Depot through a crowded park, put it yeah. in a two hour downstay, like did everything with this dog, literally held this leash with two fingers. Like, why would you be upset about that other than you are so against these tools and the training thing? Or even though I didn't train the dog, my staff does. It's like, right, right. But it's like, but it's associated with me. So it, you have to automatically so they give it. Hate it. It's oh, like, yeah. it's like yeah. if, if, and that's one of the things out there that I keep seeing is unfortunately in this industry, I get very little support in this industry. And I personally know of a hundred people that bonk dog trainers, a thousand mm. dog trainers probably bonk and over a million owner's bonk. And we've been throwing stuff at our dog since the beginning of time. <laughs> right, right. You know, your, your grandmother, Rocks, your grandmother and great you know? grandmother has been, they threw shoes and pillows and keys. Oh, man, the, and, the pantufla, they, man, and, you're, and you're the most PC, you know. Yeah, so it's, like, with... <laughs> so, so it's like, I think that it's this thing where if you don't disagree mm-hmm. with Gelman, which is fine, then you like him. And it's mm, like, right. Mm. But if you like him, that means you're as bad as him. That means now you're right. a target. So of, right. I think that it's like, just because you don't disagree, that doesn't necessarily mean you agree. You can be semi-neutral, but even if you did agree with a certain protocol, that doesn't mean you agree with everything True. Nor, nor should you, Frank. Well, you, you know, right. but I, I think I'm understanding now. Honestly, dude, like, like personally, I, I still don't get why people are are so like firmly I anti. Do. But, I, but, do. but I, I don't think it's but, a rational but, argument. That's no, right. right. Like, but but check this out, you guys. True. Check this out, and then if we can, I'd like to pivot a little bit. So yeah. So again, in dog training, out of dog training, whatever you want to call it, I think that that Jeff, maybe it's just because you come across as like just relentlessly efficient meaning meaning it's like look however you feel about it i kind of don't care just this is what's going to work for this particular case right, right. like an instruction like manual i think a lot yeah. of people robotic who, or well a lot of people who who feelingless maybe i don't know how people well, you, are, right, well yeah right but 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 feelingless you're not you're not right like, but but feelingless though can be a virtue is is what jeff's ultimately getting at because it's yeah. a matter of efficiency right like if the feeling in any in any situation Obviously, feelings matter, but if the feelings don't serve you right now, then why would you? You like I, I get I get what you're getting at, right? Yeah. So so I also then understand now, based on just everything that, like you said, going on everywhere, you know, some people just just can't vibe with that. No matter how much sense it may mm-hmm. make, Correct. they're Correct. they're just like they're just like no, but but it just doesn't feel right. And you're like, I get it, but it mm-hmm. works. It. Like it's it's like that yeah. constant back and forth. So yeah. So what I you know. What I wanted to pivot into then was the other element of the solid canine training like catalog as I've seen throughout the years, which is personally, I feel that that your for for a, a program that like, I don't think strictly not with you guys anyway, but but for a program that like very um, high percentage focuses on like behavioral cases and stuff like that. Correct. You seem to be. Uh, um a bit more rounded or a bit more diverse in your training than other people in this like similar space. You know what I'm but, saying? But, 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 the, but the narrative is that I'm not, which is fine. I cannot control the narrative. I mean, I guess oh, yeah. P- PR people say you can, but it's like, but I'm not interested. I'm just, so a couple of things it's like people have to just, they have to differentiate between confidence and cockiness. Right. Right. I think that's very, very important. I said, I know an answer. I've done it thousands of times. Why would I not be direct to the point Right. And uh-huh. methodical. Right. And also there's no sugar coating. And right. because I value your time, your pocketbook, and frankly, the dog. And why would I let your dog who is struggling with either aggression, anxiety, and you as well, why would I want that to be dragged on with a yeah. very long, drawn out protocol mm-hmm. when you can stop it today? 
Now, but that see, that's mean, that fascinating point. That, that's, that's, that, not, that's what Tyler said. Yeah, and that's not quote unquote fixed, but that right. means, okay, so you, I can get a dog. You've to at least stop. broken some ground. Yeah, yeah I, I can get a dog to stop trying to bite my kid right now. Now, right, right. that's easy. Getting the dog to not want to bite my kid. Mm-hmm. Now that takes time, but mm-hmm. at least yeah. from a triage standpoint, we've established a level of safety because once the dog lunges at your kid, you're screwed. Right. Like right. There, there's a high percentage that your dog will be dead. But but I think that let me get the dog to stop biting your kid right now. Literally, literally, it takes it takes two seconds to stop. Just right. you make it you make it suck to do. You right. know? And then now the laborious parts, which a lot of it is reward based training. Mm-hmm. A lot of oh, it yeah. is. Like right. we we aggressive dogs, we use clickers and food. Of right. course we do. You know, because yeah. why? We're training them on what we want them to do, right. which is through a reward based protocol. But right. you also have to be ready to pivot. It's like we I can't say how many dogs that we've done run our we we got the dog out for an hour. So we're, mm. we, we're, we're going through, we're going, and it knows all of its basic commands. So we're running it through some drills. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, it says, you know what? I don't want to downstay. And you're like, mm-hmm. we downstay every day for 40 times a day for two weeks. Right, right. So then you would just say, it's fair to correct a dog on obedience that's already been trained. Mm-hmm. I don't find it fair to correct a dog on obedience that is not been trained. But on the flip side, if you go, if you counter surf, I can correct you right now. Like there's right, no training. Right. It's like the training happens as you're counter surfing. Right. Well, the, you know, well, the, the training is stop. Right. Exactly. So like, you exactly. Know, 